Thursday evening, and the sky does look kind of threatening, pretty gray. But one thing that's interesting is it does have a little bit of vertical development. We don't see just a vague, textureless gray, but it's actually got convective elements in there. Very weak, but that tells us that maybe there is some instability aloft. Let's check out the sounding to see what this looks like on a SKU-T. So there you go, that's from the high resolution rapid refresh. We do see some dry air in the low levels and due to southwesterly flow, this air is probably coming from the dry desert regions of northeast Mexico. But in the upper levels, yeah, there is some relative humidity indicated by the low dew point depressions. And it looks like we're just basically getting tropical air flowing over the top of this meager cold layer in the low levels. There's the presentation on the visible satellite imagery showing lots of mid and upper level cloud and a prevailing southwesterly flow. So maybe it's time to look at the water vapor imagery. And that reveals a vast plume of moisture spreading up all the way into Missouri and Arkansas. And back to the west, we can see the cutoff flow that was southwest of California, finally ejecting northeastward. So that'll be approaching Texas, and it should likely have some sort of effect on the weather in the southern plains. There's the surface map for this afternoon. That's showing that low pressure area, which I need to mark. Yeah, there it is. In Ontario, that's moving eastward, and that's dragging that little Alberta clipper into the Great Lakes area. But down on the tail end of that, not much advection of cold air. In fact, the warm air is regaining some ground there. Back behind the front, yeah, it is cold up north, but the vast majority of that air is just flowing into the Great Lakes area. Down in the Texas region, we've got that stagnant stationary front. Looks like it has pushed northward in Louisiana, so some of the tropical air is flowing up into that part of the country. But out in Texas, the cold air is anchored in place, and it's just slowly modifying some of the isentropic lift over that cold dome, producing some clouds, and also some mid and upper level clouds associated with what's likely either a polar front jet or a subtropical jet. We'll have to take a look at the charts for that. And then we do know in Arizona that cutoff low is pulling northeastward. And we see some vague cyclonic circulation there around Tucson. And a little bit of shower activity in the El Paso and Deming area. Conditions going downhill in the Pacific Northwest. We've got snow falling in between Seattle and Spokane. And low clouds also showing up in the Portland area. And I do see a little bit of a cyclonic flow. So I may want to take a look and see if there may be a front trying to come together right in that area. And then check in Canada. Nope, nothing that we have to worry about here. Looks very typical. We don't see any very strong built up high pressure areas. We've got just this one little blob of cold air, not particularly cold, but it may work, work its way into the US in a few days. And now this is where we look at the surface pressure and thickness chart. This is our sanity check to make sure our analysis looks good. What do we see here? Well, some evidence of that front through the Ohio River Valley, warm front out to the west and the occlusion up to the north, but it's actually merged into this larger scale structure. This is a very large thermal gradient, and the south end of that is down along the Gulf Coast. So that's going to be the front that we analyzed down in that area. And then down in the western U.S., I see another thermal gradient right there. Looks a little stronger up to the north. So we could go with placement either like that, some sort of stationary front, or we could bring that a little bit further south. And I think that may be more in line with what we're seeing, especially with this precip in the Snake River Valley. And the best way to really find out for sure is to run the model forward and look for phonogenesis. And yeah, I think we do see that. There's a cyclone coming from the Pacific 
ocean region. I think there's a cold front associated with that. And then we should also find a warm front out to the west. So that may be this frontogenesis area coming together in Oregon and Idaho. And gradually that moves down into California during the day on Friday and produces some weather in that state off into Nevada. And then, of course, as we mentioned yesterday, there's going to be an even stronger system moving in on Sunday and Monday. And that's it right there. You can see how the 540 line comes all the way down to Los Angeles. And with that, a band of showers and snow showers up all the way to the Reno and Lake Tahoe area. A pretty strong cold front coming into Southern California. And then everything shifts eastward into Arizona for the daytime hours on Monday. Now, one of the keys to the pattern is the heights and vorticity panel. This is what it looks like at the time of our analysis. And you can see that cutoff low moving into southern Arizona. We do have a southern stream jet rounding the base of that low into Texas. That's given us some of the cloud material we have in this area. And then up to the north, an active northern stream. And that's it running from Saskatchewan down towards Wisconsin and Michigan. Now this will give us the key to what's going to happen over the weekend. We can just run this forward and take a look at the changes in the upper level patterns. The cutoff flow there in the southwest opens up into a wave. And there it is crossing Dallas and Waco around Friday morning. And then the impacts of that move eastward into Georgia during the day on Friday. And here comes the next system into California. You can see some strong upper level lift working on the San Francisco area, Sacramento, Stockton. And then we've got this other wave on the backside. We don't see that too often. So that's going to give us kind of a one-two one punch there. And you can see that western wave rounding the southwest corner of that trough and coming inland on Friday night. So going back to our rule of thumb on frontal placement, remember we take a look at the jet, we take a look at the ridges, and I'm kind of looking for the larger ridges, kind of like that, the larger troughs. So I'm kind of averaging these two troughs here, that one and this one. And what we do is we look for the surface low near the inflection point between the ridge and the upstream trough. So we're talking about that area right there. And that's where we expect to find the main bear clinic low. The cold fronts are going to extend kind of out into the warm air like that, and the warm front extending eastward into the warm air like that. So that's about where we expect to find the front early Saturday morning. There's the corresponding surface chart. Does that match up? Yeah, kind of does. There's the front right there. There's the warm front. Not much of a well-developed low right there. It's mostly dominated by that occluding low up in Utah. These systems are always hard to track as they go through the mountains. You can see as they emerge on the other side, suddenly things are a whole lot easier. So it's already past California, and we're getting mostly just the upper-level lift working on the back side of that front there. That's kind of that Anna front situation that we talk about often. So eventually we will get that cold air advection into California, but you can see that another system is heading their way, and that's it right there. Once again, San Francisco being hit, and it goes right down into the Los Angeles area for Monday night. And of course that opens up and moves into the plains for Wednesday. So this is actually a very complicated situation. Ironically, it's cutoff flows in a very progressive pattern. So it'll get kind of confusing trying to pick through each one of them. So what we're going to do is focus just on the next 48 hours. So for today, there's the 300 millibar chart and, yeah, split flow pattern. There's the southern stream and there's the northern stream. Is this a subtropical jet? Well, we can look at the sounding and see how deep that layer is. And this band of high winds goes all the way down to about 500 millibars. It's even 55 knots at this point that I clicked. I guess that was Oklahoma. So that's definitely going to be a polar front jet. 
typically your subtropical jets are found right around 200 millibars and they don't really have much downward extent for the most part. And they're usually associated with fair weather. Not all of it, but definitely not like what we have today. And we also know that we've had multiple days of cool weather in Texas, and that's going to reinforce the polar front jet. Most likely it's going to be found down there along the Gulf Coast. That's the most favored area for that to form because the frontal surface slopes upward from the front up and over the cold air mass. And that is where we find the jet stream. So here's what we can expect tomorrow. That cutoff low that's in the desert southwest, it's going to be located about right here tomorrow afternoon. And downstream from that, we've got the lift. Not a whole lot of it, but it's going to be enough to trigger a few showers in that area. We've got this 1030 millibar high coming down from Canada. That's going to give a reinforcing shot of cold air into much of the central and eastern U.S. And that'll reinforce that front that's down in the Gulf Coast region. Things going downhill once again in California. Looks like our new front is moving through the Los Angeles area. And then looking at our chart on Saturday, looks like that system is crossing the Rockies. Most of the upper level energy is pretty much in Utah, Arizona, and the Four Corners area. And the cold front is probably in that region right there. And we're going to see that come out into the plains on Sunday into Monday. So there it is for Sunday night. Tight packing of the thermal gradient indicating the front is located right about there. And then that front emerges. There it is coming out into East Texas and the Gulf Coast region for Monday morning. And with strong warm air advection, maybe a weak low-level jet. I'm not sure if it's going to be weak, but I think there will be some sort of low-level jet right there into the Mississippi River Valley. Maybe some showers and thunderstorms in Tennessee and Kentucky. And it looks like a little bit of wraparound snow and mixed precip up in the Central Plains. And there's California getting their very next system. And that's going to bring some much cooler weather to that part of the country. Then just a quick look ahead. Another reinforcing shot of cold air into the Great Lakes and the Northeast. Doesn't really go into Texas very much. And then just kind of a mild pattern into the end of next week. All right, and I think that's probably all I got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you all for watching, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.